<laughs> well, if you saw the thumbnail, you know why you're here. You're doing this just to sit here and watch this video, if it's in your hand anyways. That's not a good problem to have, Let's get into a little bit of the mechanics that causes that for most people. There are some cases it could be a little bit different. There are variables as always, but most common it's a lens design issue. So let's take a look at that. So the what and why you're having to lift your glasses up to read in your progressive lenses. First of all, if you're a new wearer, let me start out with saying ignore this video. You're not there yet. It could just be you really got to get used to bringing your head up to get into that near zone. If you've been wearing progressives for a while and you already know what I'm talking about, about finding that near zone, then do watch this video because that's not how it's supposed to be. What it amounts to, there are hundreds, thousands, and even then some variations within those thousands of different lens designs out there. Everyone's gonna change for every prescription. Some of them are based on an algorithm that's gonna tweak the design for the prescription for you. And that is the most common that's out there. These are known as variable corridor designs where depending on where the center of the lens is, is going to determine how much progressive corridor you get based on the length of the frame. Does that always work? Well, if you're doing this, odds are it doesn't. I'll take that a step back. Again, it does take time to get used to progressive lenses and you do have to raise your head up to read with them just by the nature of the design because let's see right here. You've got your distance part of the lens. You've got this little dot here, which is where your pupil should be in the lens when looking straight ahead and natural. And then as we look down through the lens, then you get into that near zone. This is just kind of a right sample I have laying around. And if we overlay that, you can see, let's say right there. So we have the distance for me to actually look at this. I would have to look right in this area here. And then you can see if I was trying to look right at the phone, there you go. It is a pretty dramatic movement for this lens design. Now, obviously, if I'm not trying to look up here to do that, it's gonna be a little bit easier. Say if I'm holding something in my hand, then to get into that zone, it is really right there. Just that very tiny, and yes, I am turning my head at the same time, but distance holding in my hand right here, and there, boom, near. So it's a very small adjustment, but not likely while you're here. And I'm sorry it took us two and a half minutes to get there, but we have to get that out of the way first. Hyperopic prescriptions. If you've got a little plus in the front of your top prescription before you get to the ad power part of the lens, your eyes are shorter than average. What that means is it's harder for your eyes to rotate to get into that near zone of the lens. Now throw in the way frames are made these days, they're much deeper lens or much deeper lens area than what it's been in the past decades, we're getting larger and larger and larger. Since about the early 2000s, frames have been getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger -er some years. More back to what we saw many decades ago, right? You know what I'm talking about. So the trick there is, a lot of these progressives are automatically calculated. You input the height the pupil's at, the pupillary distance, and that's it. The computer does the rest. It makes it like magic for people that really don't know necessarily what's going on or why. It's the old black box concept. I put this in, I get this out, this should work the way it's intended to. I'm not that guy. I like to know what's in the box and the why, so why I get this out. The variable corridors, more often than not, for you hyperopes, especially in a larger frame, are going to be too long to be comfortably used. It's the nature of the design. It wants to extend that corridor out 14, 15, 16, 17 millimeters to give you a larger, more comfortable zone and field of view. But guess what? If your eye is shorter and has a harder time rotating, that larger zone and field of view is more of a problem than a benefit especially if you're working at a computer or near zone much throughout the day. Now, that's still ideally a diff separate dedicated pair of glasses. Won't get into that as much today. That's a whole other video. We'll link that up here. But 
there are other lens designs out there that aren't these variable corridors. They're fixed corridors or they're different designs that are intended to ramp up faster in power. And they're gonna be, you know, eight, 10, 11, 12, maybe 13, 14 millimeters before you get to that near zone, but usually not much more than that. The benefit there is, like I was showing earlier, of course, high is minus, so really easy to get that rotation needed anyways. But that's gonna get you into that near zone a lot faster, even in the same frame and same prescription. So the shorter eyes are able to get into that zone a lot more quickly. Like, let's say if we have that zone, and I'm holding this up here. Well, now it's really easy. I don't have to work super hard at all. The near is just immediately there for me. Now, the hyperopic eyes, it's not gonna be quite that case. And that's a little hard to explain without getting into the actual length of the eye itself because that's exactly what it is. More often than not, that's just the way it is. Now, I don't wanna call out any specific manufacturers for their lens designs and the problems related to them, but a lot of designs out there are distance or arm's length priority lenses. What that amounts to is they're gonna do exactly what I was saying earlier. They're gonna lengthen that corridor out as much as they can to give you those good zones here and here, right? But then that's gonna put the near way back down there. It's the nature of the game. Now, obviously, sunglasses, whole different story. You don't want that near power just right there. Uh, odds are you're more focused on driving, maybe a gauge cluster, maybe something like that, but the far priority by far, right? If you're trying to read on a beach, that's a separate pair of glasses. I don't care what anyone tells you. You don't want your everyday wear them sunglasses to be a near priority design that really gets into that. Now, I'm not gonna say you can walk into any store and buy these lenses either because it has gotten to the point where, not to say people don't know what they're doing so much as, <sighs> It's the nature of corporations and retail being what it is. In today's age, it's about simplicity, right? We want to tell our team that we've got three lenses you can choose from. Good, better, best, that's it, done, sorry. Hands off, you can't do anything else. The design is gonna do the work for you. You take these measurements, you get this. There, back to the black box, right? You've got your three inputs, you're gonna get three things out of it. What's really funny is sometimes good is better than best. And <laughs> that's a whole other story. Oh, that gets into the people that have had cataract surgery and other refractive surgeries. Oh, it's not all it's cracked up to be and it is a wild, wild world when it comes to lens designs. Single visions are a little less prone to it, but progressives, whew, there's just a lot to take into mind there when these lenses are being designed, right? because you've got a lot of powers and a lot of changes across the lens to get it all done. Now, now, all that to say, of course, if you're doing this with your glasses, there are some fixes that can be done to the glasses as they are without doing anything else. One of those, if you can do this, <laughs> don't do it this way. Get them fitted to where they do that a little more. By increasing the angle of the front of the lenses, you make it easier to get into the near zone. Now, I won't get into the principles behind that and why as much, but the very short, simple version is the more tilt there is in the front of that frame, the easier it is to get into that near zone. It's a pretty basic optical principle, but I'm not gonna bore you on it for the next two hours. Deal with it. Other than that, a tiny bit more face form, which is just the curvature matching the front of the face, can help a little bit. I don't find in this particular case that helps as much. That's more if you're just noticing strain at near. But if you are having to do this, you're probably having eye strain too. So it's good to just go ahead and throw it in there so you know it exists. A little more wrap, a little more tilt. It's gonna help. It's not gonna solve the problem entirely. That's gonna take another lens design. Could be a refractive problem, but it's pretty unusual. The vast majority of the time, if everything is clear far away, problematic right here because I'm gonna do this and this to even get to it. Well, there you go. I will throw in the occasional myope. If you're like a minus three to a minus six, 
your eyes like a magnifier anyways. I can tell you anything all day long. It doesn't matter. You're going to do this and read just because it's easy. You've got the single vision readers as soon as you do this. You guys have two pairs built in. <laughs> Not everyone's that lucky. Yeah, well, I guess I could throw the hyper ropes under the bus and say they could wear Plano sunglasses too, just because far, far away can be pretty good in most cases. See it on occasion. Yeah, it's a wild world, guys. That's all I've got today. I'm going to stop rambling on this topic because I could really start throwing people under the bus, and that wouldn't be good for any of us, would it? Mm -mm. Nope. Don't go yell at your optician either. Like I mentioned, it's not always their fault. They're just using what they've got available. I have everything available. So if I do that, come yell at me. <laughs> See you guys next time.